Well, hey, it's a wonderful to be here. And 267? Man, you're crazy with all the radio shows that you're doing. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Um, okay, I think I might. Um, I've had a number of books released this year. Uh, one of them is called In Depth, and it is a book that is about interviews and things that I've done over the years. Uh, one of the books, I've released a number of books this year. One of them is called In Depth, and it is a collection of interviews and journal entries and select poems over the years that reflect many years over my life. And because I was on the radio with you last year, the last actual journal entry or interview entry is answering questions and finishing the interview with you from May of last year. So I thought I'd start with a short poem from this book that covers th many things over the years. Uh, this one covers women's issues because I worked as an acquaintance rate workshop facilitator for a number of years and this poem is called The Burning. I take the final swig of vodka feel it burn its way down my throat, hiss at it scorching my tongue, and reach for the bottle to pour myself another. I think of how my tonsils scream every time I let the alcohol rape me. And then I look down at my hands, shaking, holding that glass of poison, and think of how these were the hands that should have pushed you away from me, but didn't. And I keep wondering why I took your hell, took your poison. I remember how you burned your way through me. You corrupted me from the inside out, and I kept coming back. I let you infect me, and now you burn a hole right through me. I hated it, and now I have to rid myself of you, and my escape is flowing between the ice cubes in the glass nestled in my palm. But I have to drink more. The burning doesn't last as long as you do. Relatively short, but strong one, yeah. No, 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 no. In my my head, my uh, my my corded phone disconnected from my phone, so I had to reconnect it. That was all that was. No, I'm I'm not on a speakerphone. Trust me. Carl Sandberg, yep. Yeah. Was I an early reader? Um, I know that I was started reading at age three, but I don't know what defines early for reading. <laughs> I remember reading signs and things when I was three years old. I I learned early. I had. Older brothers and sisters, they were all 10 to 19 years older than me, so I had older people around me, so I was probably um, encouraged to be doing these basic things and giving up faster. I don't know, but... Ah, the first poem I ever wrote was for a class, and I was nine years old. <laughs> and it rhymed, which I don't rhyme anymore, thank goodness. But this was actually a good rhyming poem for a nine-year-old. Then it was even published in Read Magazine, which blew my mind. So I guess it was a published author by ten. <laughs> but uh, I, I started writing early. Um, but things changed because as a person grows, you find new focuses and new things to write about, uh, which is obviously apparent for being a child, teenager, a female, entering workforce, blah, blah, blah. Everything's things change, so it, your writing will obviously evolve with what you deal with from day to day as well. One of the one of the schools that was helping for founding the internet, yes. U of I. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it was it was surprising because women at the time when I went in in '88 
were not usually um, looked for or they didn't work so hard as to be able to get into a computer science and engineering degree, but I got in on my grades. I had no problem at all. I just, because of a confluence of circumstances, I found myself writing and taking photos in my spare time. And so I thought going into journalism is a great way to be able to learn about the world, be able to expand things about the world, be able to share stories with the world, and be able to not only write but also take pictures. So I ate that one up with a spoon. And I changed majors by my sophomore year, so I was just taking basic courses for computer science, which could just transfer for higher basic level courses for going into journalism, so it was no problem at all. <laughs> the um, singing is something I've always loved to do. And so I've always been very, very comfortable with it. I never took a instrument lessons. I never did that in school. Um, I would have been playing the flute, which I didn't want to do <laughs> for a band. Uh, but I, I've been told that I'm perfect pitch when I sing, and I have a good memory for things, and I sing well. I've never had any training, but it seems to work out really well just when I'm singing if I'm doing acoustic stuff, which when I was out of school and in Chicago, I um, met up with my oldest friend's husband who played the guitar and I said, hey, let's do an acoustic band. And I got a friend of mine from college and we would do songs and they were mostly covers, but you know, I'd pick different styles of music and, and I would sing them and, and it was a lot of fun. So. That was easy to just be able to pull off in the spare time, you know, just because I like doing it. You asked about writing and photography. Uh, well, I decided that I like being in writing, which is why I went into journalism. But I found when I took one of my journalism courses, it was graphic design. All of the other students, we'd get to something and you'd have to be writing a timeline of typography. and. Every single journalism student's just rolling their eyes, going, this is insanely stupid. Why am I doing this? And I'm sitting here handcrafting out these letter drawings, and I was having this field day. And I was like, oh, this is the avenue that I should be going on. I should be going on graphic design and using photography as well with my stuff, which that was a real, um, I'm going to snap my fingers, that was a real click moment when I realized that that's where I wanted to go. And so I, when I got out of school, I went into designing uh, early on flyers and brochures for a company, but then I was working for uh, food trade uh, magazines. And so I, I was not writing for them. Uh, I was doing the design work at the end and I took photos for them as well. And I, it was something I was very comfortable with. I also found when I was very early on trying to get published, I was being rejected. But when I, every magazine I bought, these were the people that were appearing in magazines. So I thought, well, graphic design, I know how to do that. And so years and years ago, I started CCND, Children's Churches and Daddy's Magazine with Scars Publications with the release of a first book because everybody would do it as long as I spent $10,000, which I wasn't going to do. <laughs> so I uh, started doing that and I ran SCARS and CCND. You mentioned Down in the Dirt magazine. That actually was the name of a supplement section inside of CCND magazine in 1994. And it just ran for a few issues in 1994. And it just, we just let it die and just said, eh, never mind. Don't want to think about it anymore. And right about the beginning of the millennium, I thought, Mm, why not? Why don't you know that was such a cool sounding name? So why don't I just start that up as a separate magazine as well, which everyone and their brother loves the name of <laughs> So they love being able to 
yeah, they love being able to say, I've been published in Down in the Dirt. I think that's something. <laughs> but, uh, but both magazines are going, and they're going well, and they're published every other month. And, and they just fell into all those things. I mean, they all just worked out perfectly with that. Um, well, Scar's Publications was the umbrella name, and back in the day when I was thinking of a name for a magazine, I just picked a name of a poem of mine, Children, Churches, and Daddies. One that talked about the dysfunctionality sometimes of all of those things in different ways. And I was looking for an umbrella name, and I just looked at a piece of prose that I wrote, a flash fiction one-page piece that's called Scar's. And I said, meh, why don't I just call it Scar's? And that's where the name came from for it. And when I wanted to get a domain for it, instead of having a website on AOL, I think, or or eWorld, which was the skirt, uh, the um, Macintosh things before that, but I wanted to have scars.com. Well, of course, that's going to be covered by everybody looking for heels for wounds, so I happened to see that scars.tv was available. And this was at the beginning of the time when I was starting to put things out more on YouTube clips or having MP3 files or having more multimedia things. So even though TV is an extension that's a name for a country, which is where I got it from, but it seemed absolutely a perfect way to incorporate multimedia stuff and different ways of publishing in as many ways as possible to have scars.tv as the domain. facilitator. That was, that background for it, that was while I was in college. And this is how I was saying you fall into things and develop things or things happen to you or your friends. You learn about, when you're on your own, how women are mistreated so regularly by men. We say we live in an equal society, but statistics say that one in four women will be raped globally by the time you're 21 years old. One in three over the course of a life. You know, it, it, it's staggering that these things still happen. And I even look back at it now. I've uh, recently moved, and in Texas I hear reports of somebody who was a fraternity president who apparently, I wish I could remember his name, but he apparently raped and left a woman for dead. Somebody else had to bring her to the hospital. They were going to place charges on, over him, and then they said, oh, he's going to take a plea deal, and he's going to do three years of community service, and that's it. And he won't have anything on his record that he's done something like this to a woman, raping her and leaving her for dead. And he is expunged. I, I, I mean, how does that happen? How on earth does that happen? Maybe that's how things happen in central Texas. I don't know. I can't tell you because that's where I've just moved to. But so I, I can't speak for things globally. But but these things are still an issue. And I would learn of this, and I would hear of stories from women all around me, or I would, st and I instantly wanted to be involved and be helping somehow. And because that happens. I learned more, I, I ran workshops, and I did ads and flyers for newspapers and, and the like, and the more I would hear about it, the more I'd want to write about it. So I have a lot of things about women's issues, um, rape-oriented or otherwise, as well, which I will try to not scare your public with reading anything from. You actually heard something like that as the one poem that related to that from the uh, collection book in depth called The Burning. One of the pieces I wrote of just how a woman would deal with being able to, with all of the ramifications of what's just happened to them, how they think it is their fault and what are you going to do and so so there's a lot of pieces on that. And so I guess the first poem that I just shared with you reflected in that.